Praise the Lord. We want to consider something very important from the Word of God. But before we look into it, can we just have a brief moment of prayer? Our Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We worship you for this day in which you have made that we should be glad and rejoice. Lord, we say be thou exalted. We pray as we look into your word this day, open our eyes of understanding to your word, instruct us through your word, and teach us your word in Jesus' name. Speak, O Lord, unto us, that we may hear what you have to say unto us. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. This day we'll be looking at the topic, the truth, the truth. In John chapter 14, our text is from John chapter 14, in verse 6. John chapter 14, I read from verse 6. John chapter 14, I read from verse 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The truth, you can see that uh, we have considered the way. Jesus Christ said is the way, and he said is the truth. Is the truth for the sinners to escape destruction. Is the truth for the sinners to escape damnation. Jesus Christ is the truth. Is the truth for the sinners uh, to be saved, to be redeemed. Uh, we'll be looking at three points as we consider this message. We'll be looking at the truth out. The truth out. In John chapter 14, in verse 6, it says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. We'll be looking at five things here. The first, in, the first thing is the truth out of rottenness. The truth out of rottenness. This happens when the sinners turn away from their unrighteousness, they turn away from their sinfulness, and they come to the truth of the word of God. They are exposed to the truth that will save them. They are exposed to the truth that will make them to, to, uh, they will, to come out. The truth that will expose them, that will make them to come out of that damnation, from that uh, ruin, from that destruction, and from that perversion. Let's look at Second uh, Corinthians chapter 6. In verse 17 and 18. 2 Corinthians 6, 17 and 18. Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate. You see that you see that the admonition there, the injunction there, come out from among them, come out from the rottenness. That is the truth. They are exposed to the truth, and that is what makes them to come out from that rottenness. You see, wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, touch not the rotten thing, touch not the defiling thing, the truth out of rottenness, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. That is when God will receive you. That is when God will receive those people. Those people when they have been when they have been saved they have been washed by the blood of the lamb they do not have to stain themselves anymore with the defiling things of the world they do not have to stain themselves with the rottenness of the world that is when god will receive them but if they are stained if they are defiled if they are you know they are unclean god will not be able to receive them unto himself because god is holy god is pure god is without spots god is without blemish or wrinkle so if they are unclean if they are spot, with spots if they are you know defiled god will not be able to receive them that is why the truth comes to them for them to come out of rottenness of defilement so that god will receive them unto himself he said i will be in verse 18 i will be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and daughters said the lord almighty the second thing we're looking at here is the truth out of recklessness the truth out of recklessness in acts chapter 9 I read from verse 3 to 6, you know, when Paul, the first, Paul who was called Saul, was breaking out, uh, threatening, he was breaking out, threatening and slaughter onto the churches. You know, the Lord visited him, you know, the Lord visited him, and that truth, the Jesus Christ who visited him, that truth like breaked him from recklessness, you know, his recklessness and his, you know, thoughtlessness, his thoughtlessness, going up and down and persecuting the churches and, and healing them and killing them. That, that kind of thoughtlessness, the Lord rescued him from that. In Acts 9, in verse 3 to 6, it says, And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. That is Jesus Christ. At the visitation of the Lord, there is always salvation. Paul, uh, who was called Saul, could not resist this at the time because the Lord himself visited him. The Lord himself visited him. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Look at this in verse 4. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. You can see that it is hard for you to, you know, persecute 
they, because as you are persecuting the church, you are persecuting me. As you are fighting the church of God, you are fighting against me. It is hard for you to do that. It will bring to your ruin, it will bring to your destruction. And that was why he visited him so that he could, see, because he had a task for him, he had a work for him. So he visited him to save him, to liberate him unto himself so that he would be able to fulfill that task. And he trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city. And it shall be told thee what thou must do. You can see that was the task. And see, I will show you what you will suffer for my sake. And so that that truth, uh, you know, liberated in Jesus Christ, liberated in the truth, the way the truth and the life, the truth there, Jesus Christ liberated him from uh, recklessness. In Romans chapter seven, he even testified after he was saved when he was writing to the Roman brethren. He said that what he said that who wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God. To Jesus Christ my Lord. Let's look at it in Romans 7 verse 24 and 25. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. The thought in here is the truth out of rashness. The truth out of rashness. You know, some people as a result of suffering, they just open their mouth and utter anything against the Lord, against the Almighty God. But they do not suppose to do that because God is in heaven and they are upon the earth. And so they should keep their mouth. They should keep it closed. No matter the persecution or suffering they are in, they should keep it closed because the Lord is greater than them. He's mightier than them is bigger than them and so their words should be few they should be uh, you know slow slow to speak and you know quick to listen slow to speak and quick to listen they should keep their hearts with all diligence because out of it are the issues of life in Ecclesiastes let's look at what the book of Ecclesiastes tells us in chapter 5 of Ecclesiastes in verse 2 chapter 5 of Ecclesiastes in verse 2 it says be not rash with thy mouth be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thy heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon earth, therefore let thy words be few. You can see it's this truth that makes them to be liberated from, to be, you know, to not be given to rashness. This 14 year, the 14 is the truth out of renegade. The truth out of renegade. You see, some people call the Lord, they say, Lord, Lord, but they do not do the things which he say. That is renegade. That is, you know, a betrayal. They, they, they act as if they are going to, you know, they, they profess that they know God, but inwardly, they, they do not, they do, not uh, do what he say they should do. They still continue their wickedness. They still continue their perverseness. In John chapter 8, in verse 37. John chapter 8, I read in verse 37. John chapter 8 in verse 37, it says, I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. You see, these people have not given place to the word of God. They have not given place to the truth of the word of God. And so that is why they, that, uh, they still have that renegade, that attitude, that disposition of betrayal. But you see, when this truth comes to them, when it's, you know, a, the ray of the truth of the word of God, when it penetrates their heart, they will be so be they will submit unto the truth of the word of God in Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, I read from verse Matthew chapter 12, from verse 46 to 50. Matthew 12, 46 to 50. Who, when he had found one pair of great price, Matthew, Matthew chapter 12, sorry, Matthew 12, mm -hmm. verse. 46 to 50. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him, that told him, Who is my mother and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my bre brother and sister and mother. You can see. He does not just want somebody to, you know, call him Lord, Lord, and not do what he's saying. You no, know, does not just want somebody to say, my brother, and is not doing the will of his father, which is in heaven. So that was how he said that, well, for whosoever shall do the will of my father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. In Mark chapter 3, in verse 34 and 35, Mark chapter 3, Mark chapter 3, in verse 34, and 35 he says and he looked round about on them which sat about him and said behold my mother and my brethren for whosoever shall do the will of god the same is my brother and my sister and mother so the sinners the people are exposed to this truth and they know that what is this truth that what that brings them out of renegade out of the disposition of betrayal so that they'll not just call lord lord and not do what he's saying but they will submit unto his instruction and they will be doers of the word. I pray that the Lord will help us to be doers of his word and not 
not hear us only in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. I read from verse 27 and 28. Luke 11, verse 27 and 28. And it came to pass as he spake these things. A certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the paps which thou hast sucked. You can see that Jesus Christ was teaching, he was giving an instruction uh, because the people sought a sign and he said the sign will not be shown unto this uh, uh, wicked and adulterous uh, generation. And so he look at what, as he was teaching them, as he was talking about, uh, he was talking about he, the, the unclean spirit being uh, entering into a man, the last state of that man be worse than the first. And so then this woman, uh, this woman said, a woman which was listening to this word, listening to this message, now said, Blessed is the womb that bear thee and the paths which thou hast sucked. What, what did Jesus Christ reply out? Jesus said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. So it's not just be those who hear the word of God only, but those who keep the word of God also, so that is the truth out of renegade. This truth we are being exposed to now will make one to be liberated and not be given to the disposition of renegade or betrayal. The 15th year is the truth out of realm. The truth out of realm. One will not be destroyed. You know, Paul, uh, um, um, Judas Iscariot he was given to that uh, as a result of his covetousness, as a result of his love for money. And so he went and sold his master. What happened? He, his, his, his ministry, his life and ministry was ruined eventually. Let's look at Matthew chapter, um, Matthew chapter 26. Matthew 26. In verse uh, 24, let's look at what Jesus Christ said concerning him. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man, woe unto that man, ruin, destruction come upon that man that by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been better, it had been good for that man if he had not been born. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Let's look at what happened now to Judas. Judas Iscariot still said, Lord, is it I? And then Jesus said, Thou hast said. But let's look at what happened to him in Matthew 27, verse 3 to 5. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, he still went ahead and betrayed his master. He still went ahead and betrayed an innocent blood. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? Sit down to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. You can see that he committed suicide. He could not forgive himself anymore. He went and committed suicide. And the end of that man was uh, disastrous. The end of that man was disastrous. As a result of renegade, he brought himself to great ruin. He brought himself to great ruin. So let us look. That is why this truth comes to us. So that we will be liberated from renegade. We will be liberated from ruin. So that we will not bring sudden destruction upon ourselves. In Luke, let's look at Luke chapter 6. The word of God comes to us, so let us take heed to the word of God, so that we will not uh, bring ourselves to a great ruin. Luke chapter six, in verse uh, forty-six to forty-nine. Luke six forty-six to forty-nine. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sins and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. If you come to him, Christ, and you hear his words and you do them, then what will happen? You are like a man which built your, his house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon the house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But those who do not do what they, uh, they who do not keep the word of God, even though they have had, they do not keep it, what, what will happen to them? How are they like? But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, that is strongly, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. I pray we will not be brought to a great ruin as a result of our uh, being indisposed to the truth. That is what the truth comes to us, so that we will hear the word of God and keep it in Jesus' name. The second point you'll be looking at is the truth in the truth in. The truth in in John chapter 14. In John chapter 14, I read in verse 6. John 14 in verse 6. It says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. We'll be looking at five things here. The first thing is the truth into reconciliation. The truth into reconciliation. In Second Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5 in verse 15. 
17 to 21. It says in verse 15, And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Jesus Christ died for the sinners, so they are not to live unto themselves, but to live unto Christ Jesus. Verse 17 to 21. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, the old all things have become new. They are not to go back to their old way of life, to their old disposition, but to to live in the newness of Christ's righteousness. And all things are of God, who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and had made and had given us given to us the ministry of reconciliation. We who were made far now at midnight as a result of the reconciliation, the re, reconcil the ministry of reconciliation which Christ undertook. And so he has given unto us that same ministry of reconciliation to also bring others to himself. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing the trespasses unto them, and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors. We are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's death, be you reconciled to God. For he had made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He had, God had made Christ to be sin for us. We committed sin, but God laid our sin upon him, laid our iniquities, on, our iniquities upon him, so that he, can, he could carry it on the cross and you know, liberate us and redeem us unto himself. The second thing we'll be looking at here is the truth into redemption. The truth into redemption. Ephesians chapter 1, the truth into redemption. Ephesians 1 verse 7 and 14. It says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace. In verse 14, which is the earnest which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. The third thing here is the truth into restoration. The truth into restoration. You can see when David committed sin, he prayed that God should restore to him the joy of salvation. And so the truth, when we hear that truth, when we are uh, exposed to that truth, then we come out of you know our sins and we are restored to the truth of the word of God. We are, we are restored unto the way of God. In Psalm chapter 51, Psalm 51, I read in verse 12. It says, Psalm 51, in verse 12, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Uphold me with thy free spirit. Then let's look at Galatians chapter 6, in verse 1. Galatians chapter 6, I read in verse 1. Galatians 6, in verse 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in the fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. You can see that restore such an one so that you also will not be will not be overtaken. You also will not, you know, go in the way of perverseness and in the way of foolishness. In Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 17, after one has been restored from the way of sinfulness and evil, then one will now have restoration in health. On all the waste places, all the desolation that has come upon one before, then there will be a, re a re there will be a re resuscitation, there will be, you know, a, a building, a rebuilding of the waste places. Let's look at Jeremiah 30 verse 17. It says, For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, said the Lord, because, that, because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh get after. You can see, the Lord is promising us that he will uh, restore health unto us. So we will have health again. Let's look at what happened to Job. Job whom captivity came upon him. So he came out of that captivity. God restored to him and he, he came back again. He came back again from his real uh, state. In Job chapter 42 verse 10, he says that the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. You can see God doubled his riches. God doubled his properties. God doubled all that he had. That is to show that God, uh, you know, enlarged his coast. God enlarged his coast. And so in Amos chapter 9 verse 4, let's look at what the scripture tells us. In Amos chapter 9, in Amos chapter 9, I read from verse 4. In Amos chapter 9, Amos chapter 9, in verse, I read from verse 4. He says in Amos 9 verse 4, And though they go into captivity before their enemies, thence will I command the sword and it shall... In, in Amos chapter 9, I read from verse... In 
in verse 14 and i will bring again the captivity of my people of israel and they shall build the waste places the waste cities and inhabit them and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof they shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them you can see that god is promising these people that they they will build their waste places they will build their waste places and they shall inhabit them they shall plant vineyards and they will you know eat the fruit of it that's the, the truth into restoration you will look at the 14 the truth into regeneration the truth into regeneration we are regenerated we are no longer under captivity we are regenerated and so we have to uh, be disposed to the truth that will bring us into regeneration in titus chapter 3 in verse 4 to 6 titus chapter 3 in verse 4 to 6 he says but after that the kindness and love of god our savior toward men appeared done by the works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the holy ghost which he shed on us abundantly through jesus christ our savior that is the truth into regeneration you see john uh, uh, in the book of john when uh, nicodemus met with jesus christ when nicodemus met with the savior he uh jesus christ exposed the word of god unto him talking to him about being born again talking to him about being born spiritually being regenerated being born of water and of the spirit john 3 verse 3 to 7 it says jesus answered and said unto him verily verily i say unto thee except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god nicodemus said unto him how can a man be born when he is old can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born jesus answered verily verily i say unto thee except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of god that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit marvel not that i said unto thee ye must be born again don't be surprised that i'm saying unto you you must be born again it's an imperative it's a, it's a prerequisite for one to get to the kingdom of god the fifth thing we'll be looking at here is the truth into renewal the truth into renewal let's read titus again titus 3 in verse 5 titus chapter 3 i read in verse in verse 5 not by works of righteousness which you have done but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the holy ghost you see the power of the holy spirit is there cannot be uh, overemphasized in this uh, the power of the holy spirit the 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 need of the power of the Holy Spirit cannot be overemphasized in the in the in the concept or in the subject of being uh, born again. One have to be washed by the washing of regeneration and renewed by the Holy Ghost. So the truth into renewal. When one listen to this truth, let one submit unto this truth so that one will enter into the renewal that one have to, ought to have. In Romans chapter eight, in verse two, eleven, then fourteen to sixteen. Romans chapter eight, Romans chapter eight, and verse two. Romans chapter 8 in verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. In verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Verse 14 to 16 now. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The Spirit of God beareth bears witness with our spirit that we are not children of God. So we know that is the confirmation that we are children of God. We know that we are now children of God. And so we live that life of righteousness and holiness in Lamentation chapter 5 in verse 21. In the book of Lamentation chapter 5 in verse uh, 21 lamentation the truth into renewal the truth into renewal the spirit of god is involved the quickening action of the dynamic spirit that is what renews us that is what revives us that is what um, revitalizes us in lamentation chapter 5 in verse 21 it says turn thou us unto thee o lord and we shall be returned and we shall be turned renew our days of as of old renew our days as of old we need that renewal we need that renewal in our lives so that we will no longer be old we will no longer be weak we will no longer be feeble we will be renewed day by day we are renewed by the holy ghost turn thou us unto the old lord and we shall be turned renew our days as of old that is that we depend on the spirit of god we depend on the spirit of god to perform this action in our life this quickening action We'll be looking at the third point now. The third point is the truth for the truth for John 14, verse 6. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. I read in verse 
6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. We'll be looking at three things here. The first thing is the truth for our revival. The truth for our revival. In Ephesians chapter 2, I read in verse 1. Ephesians chapter 2, in verse 1. It says, and you are the quicken who were dead in trespasses and sins, the truth for our revival. In 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14, when we hear this truth, let us surrender and submit unto it so that we will have the revival that the Lord wants us to have. Yes, so that we will have it. In 2 Chronicles 7, in verse 14, it says in verse 14, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. That is when the land can be revived. That is the truth for our revival. In Psalm chapter 85, in verse 4 to 6, Psalm chapter 85, Psalm chapter 85, in verse 4 to cease. Turn us, O God of our salvation, and cause thy anger toward us to cease. Will thou be angry with us forever? Will thou draw thy anger to all generations? Will thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? You can see that in Psalm chapter 119, I read from verse 25, Psalm 119, that is the truth for our revival. So we are telling the Lord to, to bring us to himself. We are telling the Lord to have mercy upon us, to forgive us so that we can be cleansed, we can be re restored. I have declared my, in verse 25, my soul cleaveth unto the dust, quicken down me according to thy word. In verse 37, it says, turn away my eyes from beholding vanity and quicken down me in thy way. In verse 40, behold, I have longed after thy precept, quicken me. In thy righteousness, in verse 88 now, quicken me after thy loving kindness, so shall I keep the testimony of thy mouth. In verse 107, I am afflicted very much, quicken me, O Lord, according unto thy word. In verse 156, in verse 156, Great are thy tender mercies, O Lord, quicken me according to thy judgment. And in verse 159, Consider how I love thy precept, quicken me, O Lord, according to thy loving kindness. This second thing here is the truth for our restitution. The truth for our restitution. There was a man who surrendered unto the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ visited him and he surrendered unto the Lord and he restituted. He said, Behold the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything by false accusation, I restore unto him fourfold. So that is the restitution there. The truth. He had the truth. Jesus Christ came to him and exposed the truth unto him. And so he had it and submitted unto it and he restituted. In Luke chapter 19, that's the story of Zacchaeus there. Let's read. It's from verse 1 to 10. Let's read in verse 5. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at the house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was going to be cursed with a man that is a sinner. Meanwhile, Jesus Christ did not come to call the righteous, but sinners unto repentance. Look at verse 8. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. He had the message of salvation. He had the word of God. So he wanted to restitute all that he has taken from, uh, from by false accusation from the people. And he said, if, and if I have taken anything by false accusation, I restore him for food. And Jesus said unto him, This day salvation come to thy house, to this house, for as much as he also is the son of Abraham. For the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. The third thing here is the truth for our recovery. The truth for our recovery. In Mark chapter 16, we recover. We recover from every disease, from every sicknesses that comes. When we look at this truth, when we submit unto this truth. In Mark chapter 16, I read from verse 15 to 20. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. So the signs are following, the wonders, the, the miracles follow them and, and it, it aided for their recovery. The 14 years, the truth for our recognition, the truth for our recognition. When we recover of every form of sicknesses and diseases, then we are recognized in Christ. We are recognized in Christ. The world will see it and they will testify. They will glorify God uh, on our behalf. Let's look at Philippians chapter 3 in verse 9. This is 
Paul the Apostle talking to the Philippian brethren, Philippians chapter 3 in verse 9, and be found in him. We are not found in the world when we are scrutinized. God does not, God does not found, uh, find us in the world. God finds us in him. God finds us in him, not in the world. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. The 15 year is the truth for our riches, the truth for our riches. When we submit unto the Lord totally, total submission unto the Lord, it then it aids for our having the riches in glory by Christ Jesus. In Philippians 4 verse 19, it says, But my God shall supply all your need according to the riches in glory, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. In Psalm 112, in verse 3, we have that riches in glory. We control the riches in glory. The riches do, do, do not control us, but we control the riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So in Psalm 112, in verse 3, it says in Psalm 112, verse 3, Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endure it forever. So we tap into that. We tap into this truth. And so that is for us having the riches in glory uh, by Christ Jesus. In Second Chronicles chapter 1 in verse 12, Second Chronicles chapter 1 in verse 12, we surrender unto this truth, we submit unto this truth, which is Jesus Christ, that is Jesus Christ. And so he aids us, he helps us to have all these things that he, uh, you know, promised us. He has promised us reconciliation, he has promised us redemption, restoration, regeneration, renewal, revival, rest, uh, recovery, recognition in his, in his righteousness and riches. So when we sur submit unto this truth, then we will have all what he has promised us. In 2 Chronicles chapter 1 verse 12, wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches and wealth and honor such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee, neither shall dear any after thee have the like. You can see Solomon. Solomon asked for wisdom. It was wise to ask for wisdom, and God gave him riches. God gave him knowledge. God gave him everything. He, he even wealth and wisdom and knowledge. God gave him, and you see that that was why he was able to write the Proverbs, chapter ten, verse twenty-two, in the book of Proverbs, chapter twenty-two, uh, chapter ten, in verse twenty-two. Proverbs, chapter ten. I read in verse twenty-two. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 10, in verse 22, it says, in Proverbs 10, verse 22, The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he added no sorrow with it. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he added no sorrow with it. So, that is what we should expect. That is what we should wait for. That is what we should hope for. We are to settle for the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and there's no sorrow attached to it. There's no sorrow added to it. So that is why we have to surrender to the Lord. We have to surrender to the truth, the way, the truth and the life so that we will have all this promised blessing. The Lord does want us to come out of rottenness. He wants us to come out from recklessness, rashness, renegade and ruin so that we will possess, will possess his divine nature. Who possess his divine nature, we have his redemption, we have his restoration, his regeneration, his renewal, his revival, his recovery, and we have his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Let's go to the Lord in prayer now and talk to him, and he will cause us to have all these things that he has promised unto us.